Look at this beautiful potato salad. This kind of redefines potato salad altogether. Brings together a harmony of flavors and vegetables that you just normally might not consider using in potato salad. So try out the southwestern version of a wonderful potato salad. Hello! Welcome back to Texas Cooking Today. On this episode of Texas Cooking Today, we're going to be doing a wonderful tasting dish called potato salad. Now, potato salad is something that we've all had. It's a delicious dish. And what I'm going to do is to take the most common version, in the South at least, for potato salad, and I'm going to bump it up a notch. We're going to get a little extra color, a little extra flavor, and turn it into something just a little bit more special than your average, boring, bland potato salad. So, let's give credit, first of all, to this wonderful vegetable that made it all happen. This guy originally comes from South America. It came to us by crossing the Atlantic twice. First, the Spanish in the 1600s took this to Europe, and it became very popular. It spread all over the place. It became so popular that in Ireland in the 1840s, there was a massive famine that wiped out all of the potatoes. It was a potato famine. It was a, a blight, a disease, plant disease, that turned these into mush in the ground. And because the Irish were so dependent upon the potato, many of them died of starvation. It was a horrible situation. But anyway, these things came across the Atlantic Ocean the second time to North America where it landed in the United States and we have embraced it and used it ever since. So, the potato is king in this dish, but let me show you all of the other wonderful goodies that we have here to make the best tasting potato salad you've ever put in your mouth. Come over this way. take a look at these beautiful ingredients that we have. First of all, our potatoes. I'm going to be using anywhere from two and a half to three pounds of russet potatoes. You can use any kind of potato you want for this, okay? So if you like those Yukon Golds or the white potatoes or reds, pick what you like. But remember one thing, not all potatoes cook at the same speed. So you're going to have to adjust your cooking time with each different potato you use. Now, to this, I'm also going to be adding in some of this onion. Now, I'm going to want about a half a cup to three quarters of a cup of diced onion when I'm done with this. And uh, I'm using this red onion because, A, I'm wanting to introduce color to this dish. Also, I just love the flavor of that red. They're fantastic onions. Now, I have down here some sweet peppers some different colors. Again, we're introducing color to the dish, but also the sweet pepper is going to lend well to this dish. It just seems to work in it wonderfully. The flavors marry perfectly with what's going on here. I'm going to have anywhere from about three quarters of a cup to a cup of chopped sweet peppers when I'm done. And I'm not dicing these, I'm just cutting rings so it'll look like there's more than there really is. One to two cloves of garlic. When I'm finished about a uh, teaspoon to teaspoon and a half of minced garlic is what I'm looking for. Back here I have some sweet pickles. Now on the sweet pickles, once I finish dicing these up, I'm going to want to have on the neighborhood of about a half a cup to three quarters of a cup of sweet pickles. I have three quarters of a cup of mayonnaise. Here I have some mustard. Now I've got two different mustards here two tablespoons of a yellow mustard and one tablespoon of Dijon mustard and that's a really light mild Dijon it's something I really love if you can't find those sweet pickles you can also use relish or frankly you can put the two together whatever suits you okay now right here you know a lot of folks like to put a little bit of paprika or cayenne on their dishes and stuff like that and I just don't like sprinkling in raw spice on a cold dish it just sort of goes against my grain okay so what I have here is a prepared chipotle sauce this is made by a, a very popular sauce manufacturer here in the United States and you'll find it over just you know where all the other pepper sauces are so find your, your nice chipotle sauce a little bit of salt 
and over here we have some cilantro the cilantro is going to be a wonderful addition it's just going to be added as some plucked leaves at the very end as they're stirred in so let's get right on to cooking all of this up we're going to start by peeling these potatoes and getting them into some boiling water but the first thing I want to do in preparing my potatoes is just to simply peel them now I've got a potato peeler here uh, or vegetable peeler is what they call this that makes this really really simple and quick so if you don't have one of these I recommend it otherwise you're going to be spending some time with a paring knife now you want to just simply work that peel off of there. You don't have to do this. If you prefer a peel-on potato salad, you can certainly do that. Not a problem. And after I peel these, I'm going to give them a good wash. Take out any bad spots if you see them, like I did right there. Okay? It's ready for its rinse. So just do all of yours the same way. And we'll get to cutting them in just a moment. All right, now I just need to wash these off and we'll get those sliced. Now let's get on with cutting up our potatoes for making a potato salad. What I want to do is to produce some little pieces that are on average going to be about three quarters of an inch square. Now, while I know I can't get perfection in that, I can do my best to get close. What I want is to have pieces that are bite size, not too large. If it's too much of a chunk for someone to bite down on, that's just not cool. Okay, so let's make sure that we pay attention. Now, notice that when I'm cutting, A, we're choked up on that blade. Pinch it right here, okay? Wrap your hand around that handle, all right? Notice when I have my hands on here, these fingertips down here are curved under. They're not sticking out like this, they're brought back like this. Now, as long as those are underneath, like so, then there isn't any fear of my blade coming down and hitting the tip of my finger. This part of the knuckle right here then becomes a cutting guide for the side of my blade right here. So, tips curved under, choke up on that blade for better control. Okay, very simple. Now, a larger potato, we're going to have to take a little different approach on that. Okay, I've got, again, those fingers curved under. I want to cut off one side, like so. I want to turn this and cut off about the same amount on the other side. I'm trying to split this so that there's three fairly equal parts. Again, do this the same way I did the other. Now, some of these where the tips are, that tip is going to overcook and that's a good thing because it's going to provide us a small amount of potato that mashes believe it or not it turns uh, just a little bit pasty and soft and produces a nice thick covering for your mashed potato or excuse me your uh, potato salad and it's like I said it's very similar to a mashed potato now we don't want this mushy don't get me wrong that's not what I'm saying uh, I do not want to a gooey mushy product when I'm finished. I don't want a mashed potato product when I'm finished. I want firm potatoes. I just recognize the fact that some tips and small pieces are going to give me a unique flavor. Like that little piece is certainly going to cook faster than that piece. This one's going to turn into mush. This one's going to be the potato that stands up and makes a nice lumpy potato salad for you. So fear not the little pieces. They're good and they work for us. Something I would like to mention, when you see me push stuff off of my blade and it's lengthwise, I'm running my hand down the back edge of the blade here, never, never close to that edge. My finger is pulled up like this, and I simply push stuff off like that. Another safe way would be just to push down and away from that edge, or even safer, simply take whatever food is on there and rake it off on the board, okay? Like so. Just like that, okay? Now, let's get these potatoes into the water and get them all cooked up for our tater salad. Now, again, same thing with the hands. 
holding them the right way, we're going to make nice, beautiful little pepper slices. When you get close to that crown, be careful. There we go. Now these are a sweet pepper. There is no real heat in them. These have become rather popular in our grocery market. Beautiful addition to any potato salad. Now, we're going to go ahead and get started slicing our red onion. Now, something I want to mention to, uh, to you about cutting up onions, first of all. The root end, leave it intact. Do not cut it off. If you cut this root end off, the first thing that's going to happen is this onion is going to start exuding its juices. It'll start weeping out. And when it does that, of course, it's in those juices that the sulfuric fume that makes your eyes teary will be released. So you'll want to avoid releasing any more of the uh, moisture of the onion than absolutely necessary. So leave the root end intact. Okay? Now, the stem end right here, I've already taken part of it off, but I'm going to finish trimming that up for us. Now, I've got a flat surface to keep this from rolling around. It's nice and stable. Let me show you a neat way to dice out an onion. Get your knife good and straight and make a straight cut straight down on the side of the root, not through it. Okay? So just like so. Boom. There's one half. Same thing on the other side. Now have a center section to work with and two halves to work with. Now neat way of doing dicing and this will give you a perfect diced onion every time. See how I run my knife through that sideways? Then lengthwise from top of onion to the bottom I'm going to make some cuts and I want those to be the size I want my onion to be in the way of dice. So here's some small dice. This is going to be about three-eighths of an inch square on most of it. Turn that onion, straighten it up against my blade. Now, let's make those cross cuts at about the same width as the first cuts. There we go. Now what this gives me is a perfect uniform dice. If you look at that, that's all very, very even. Now, that center section, I'm also going to work it over. I'm going to make two cuts across it, not all the way up to the root, and be careful about your fingers hanging over. You want them just on top to steady it, not on the sides, okay? There we go, and I haven't cut through that root. Now if I want, see how this wants to pull apart, uh, if I want, at this point I can remove the root and there's not going to be much uh, collateral damage, okay? So I take this off, I have very little waste except for what I lost on the floor a moment ago. Doing demonstrations isn't as easy as it looks, trust me. I want to make those lengthwise cuts first. Now when I put my finger on this other side here, I keep, first of all, the blade itself in contact with the board, and my finger never touches the board itself. It's up higher, and I'm simply holding that food in place as I pull that knife back. Okay? Be careful when you do that. Okay, now we get that cross cut. For those nice, even dice. Now, we need to go ahead and get our pickles diced up. Now, remember, these are a sweet pickle. And what I'm going to do here is to simply, very carefully, half these, okay? And then I want to take those halves and quarter them, like so. And just make some simple cross cuts. And there I have diced out my sweet pickles. Now, a beautiful, even. Our garlic, Let's pull out a couple of cloves of that garlic. There we go. Now, sometimes you get a bad spot on a clove. 
and you can just cut that out. First of all, I'm going to remove that scab, and there's the bad spot on the other end. And remember, I said we're going to want anywhere from a teaspoon to a teaspoon and a half. Now, though I can do this with a chef's knife, I really prefer to use a little shorter blade, something that's a little heavier and more substantial. Okay, first I'm going to crush that garlic, and the reason I crush it is just to keep it from bouncing it around as I begin this process. Things are flying off my cutting board today like never before. One thing's for sure, if it flies off, leave it on the floor. Okay. Now, you're going to see me holding the knife a completely different way this time. And that is because we're going to be doing a really fast mincing. Now, what I want to do with my blade is I'm going to be actually rocking it up this way and back down this way. And if you notice how I'm holding the tip right here, it's exactly the way I'm going to be holding it when I'm doing this. Just like so. Make sure that thumb is curved under. Make sure your fingers are on top of the blade and off of the board when you make this motion. And we're just going to make that motion straight through our garlic. Every once in a while, clear your blade. You can do this just by raking it off on the board also, like so and so. Very simple to mince, isn't it? Once you know the right technique. There we go. Now I have a nice fine mix. And I have, I would say, close to two teaspoons there. So what I'm going to do. Just place about that much in there, closer to one and a half, and there's our garlic. Now, let's get on with the cook. Our water is now up to a boil. Let's go ahead and get these potatoes down in there. Now, I don't want to have boiling water splattering all over me as I'm trying to pour this in. So this becomes a dangerous operation unless I get smart about it. So how about I just take a spoon and gently lower these potatoes right down in there. It's no fun having boiling water splash up on you when you pour stuff in it. If that was a much deeper pot, I might have ran the risk. Now, bring this back to a boil. I'm going to want to watch this closely. I don't want these to overcook. If they get to where they're sort of hazy looking on the outside and they have rounded corners, you've overcooked it. Okay? And then you're just going to end up with mashed potatoes. So I want to leave this so that they have sharp corners and that the fork goes in them easily. Now, as my potatoes have begun their cook, over here in a pan, I'm putting a low heat underneath this pan. We're going to put some olive oil in here. Now, earlier I mentioned that I just don't like raw spices in a dish, okay? Now, what I'm going to do here is we're going to cook off this raw garlic. Um, it's kind of really a much better flavor that you're going to get from this and it's going to disperse throughout this dish with a much smaller amount of garlic. If you use raw garlic inside of a potato salad, well, it's going to be bitter, it's going to be harsh, and um, it's not going to be a welcome kind of thing. So I recommend cooking your garlic off first, getting the flavor into that oil, and then we will combine that oil with other ingredients before putting it down in our potato salad. And this will not take long to cook. All I need to do is just 
cook this until that garlic becomes a light tan color. It'll be like the color of a shelled peanut. Very light tan. Now this is the kind of thing that I do like to attend when uh, I'm doing it because if this gets overcooked the garlic will quickly become bitter and it will not be palatable so you don't want it to turn a medium or dark brown because then it just gets really very unpleasant. Now as your garlic is cooking and if you'll notice this is starting to change color just lightly uh, as your garlic is cooking you're going to need another bowl close at hand. It's going to need to be a bowl that can handle high heat so uh, I like stainless it works really well and I can pour this garlic straight down into this so it will cool quickly. go. The beautiful smell of garlic releasing in the air. As you notice there's not too much so it's just a light amount. We don't want garlic to slap you in the face in this dish. We just want a hint of it in the background flavor. Now the smaller pieces are starting to take on that lightly tan color. So it's going to cook really fast at this point. we go. See that nice light peanut color? We turn off the heat right at that point. I'm going to go ahead and pull the garlic and the oil right down into my mixing bowl. Mixing bowl here is important because that's what I'm going to mix my dressing for this potato salad. So now I can simply let this cool in here and that won't take it very long. I'm doing working it around the sides like this. This is cooling it because that hot oil will still cook that garlic. See how it's turning that beautiful peanut color? Just what we needed. So I'll keep swirling it a bit. Okay, I can feel the bottom of the bowl to see how well it's cooling and it's cooling down nicely. So just keep working that until it's nice and cool. It'll keep dissipating the heat because we have to get it to mix in with things like our mayonnaise and other stuff and I don't want a hot product that won't work. There we go. Now it's time for us to check out those potatoes. Let's see how well they're coming along if they're cooking properly. We'll just pull some up put a fork in it. You know you've heard the old test. Okay, it broke that apart fairly easy. I'm turning off the heat now and I want to run that through a strainer. Just pour your potatoes off into a strainer and then quickly get them into a refrigerator or a freezer to chill them. And I want to go for a quick chill in my freezer and we'll push some of these up on the sides. Also, stop cooking. I can use cold water quite effective. Now let's go ahead and make our dressing. I have my cooled uh, garlic and olive oil mixture there. And I'm just going to go ahead and put my mustard right down in here. Okay. And you don't have to get every bit of it. Work that together and make sort of an oily mustard compound. Don't worry because there's a lot of oil in that mayonnaise too and it's going to mix right into that. Now our mayo. I'm going to go ahead and get my sauce in here. This chipotle sauce. And I'm also going to need a pinch of salt. This is going to be about a half a teaspoon of salt. So let's go ahead and mix that together. I'm 
Now, the neat thing about making this sauce in a separate bowl is that when you're mixing up your potato salad, you get to sort of put in how much of this that you want. If you want a little more, you can add a little more. If you want less, you can start out with a small amount and work your way up. There we go. And it's a little bit lumpy because the mayonnaise isn't fully breaking down yet, but it will. There we go. So now we're waiting for the ingredients, mainly the potatoes, to finish chilling. And then we're going to put everything in this all together. I'm now going to take a moment to prepare my herbs. And all I'm going to do is simply pluck these leaves free and put them down in a bowl. And we'll do that with all of this cilantro. And that's so I don't get a whole bunch of stem in there. There we go. That's about a quarter cup of cilantro leaves. Right there. Now we have everything all together. The potatoes have been chilled. They just came out of the freezer. They're not frozen. This is still wet right up here. But they are now cold. As refrigerator cold. Okay. First thing I want to do is put them down in a large bowl. The reason I didn't use this bowl I find that folding ingredients like this works best in a really big bowl. Now, first thing I want to do is to start with some, not all, some of my dressing. There we go. About half. There we are. And remember, as I told you earlier, how much of that dressing you use really depends on your desire for a really wet salad. Now that looks like too much, but when we get these other ingredients in there, it's going to dissipate some of that dressing. I want to put a little bit of salt in this. Potatoes are salt thirsty, don't worry about that. Go ahead and get onion in here. Our peppers. Our pickles. And we're going to wait on the herbs. Now, all I need to do is just to gently fold all of this together. I don't want to overcoat my peppers because I don't want to lose the robust color that they are providing me. And the same with my pickles and my, my onion, which now have a beautiful blending of. Look at this. Isn't that gorgeous? Let me get this over in this frame a little more. Now, some of these cilantro leaves. And gently fold it in a little more. There. My salad is now ready to serve. Okay, beautiful colors. Lovely dressing. If I wanted more dressing, I can go ahead and add it to this. If I wanted it a little bit more sweet, I could start putting in some of that relish. Okay. One thing I do need to do is taste it. So the first thing I want to do is pull out a piece. Looks like some pickle and my potato. Mmm. Oh my god. Oh, delicious. And those peppers are this fantastic offset to everything. Mmm. The salt is spot on perfect. All I have to do is serve it up. Now, to put it in another dish to make it look clean and pretty. There it is. That isn't so difficult. There's a lot of cutting. But this is a fun dish to make. It's just not overly um, intense when it comes to how to make it. But look at this, you get this beautiful product. This gorgeous, gorgeous potato salad. Mm. Believe me, oh 
man. Those peppers make all the difference. Mmm. This wonderful balance of flavor. Just the right amount of acid. Just the right amount of sweet in those pickles. Meeting head on with the savory flavors that we have going on in this. A little bit of sweet in the peppers, the savory in the cilantro, the whole thing just works. This is a fantastic dish. Please give it a try. And I would like to thank you for watching Texas Cooking today. To my subscribers, thank you very much. And um, if you haven't subscribed, well gosh, what are you waiting on? Please do. I've got great recipes and much more coming. You folks have a good day. Bye bye. Thank you for watching Texas Cooking Today, the show where you can get great recipes and the best techniques are taught. Please subscribe to Texas Cooking Today, where you will always find something hot and ready to eat.